his feet to the side and moving ourselves out to here. Now his legs don't work properly, and this is a big problem. What our partner is going to do here is he's going to have to set a palm prop on this leg that stops me from moving forward, and that's going to let him push off this leg and swing his feet back into face. Let's have you throw my legs. So if my feet are connected to his hips, that's no good. He separates, he throws, and moves. Uh, Take some steps from there. So I use my palm prop here to stop him. My legs come up, my hips come up off the floor. I make my connection again. He throws my feet. Looks to move. Yeah, right there. So see how that's going to stop him from getting close to my guard? This little palm prop here. My feet are going to come up. They find connection to his hip. Okay, let's show the uh, second part of this. So Ryan's back on the floor. This is the second situation. So this time I throw the feet and I'm able to get my trail leg, not my lead leg, my trail leg gets to the hip line. Okay, so after you try that in the beginning where you're able to stop them at a long distance, this time now I'm closer. This is a different situation and will require a different reaction. So he does the first one where he throws the feet, he doesn't get too far. So I'm able to frame. Oh, oh, that, now, now he got his trail leg there. So that, this, this would require a different situation. So now here, this frame isn't going to work because his trail leg got set. So now I can't use a palm frame. I'm going to have to use an elbow frame here. So I set my elbow frame on his shin. That's going to keep him away from me. Now I have to do what's called a high leg scissor. My butt comes up off the floor. I find my mark with my outside leg. I lift my hips up. Boom! And now right here, I'm locked back up with my partner. My here, here, guys. That we have the entire body as a target that we can step on. The one thing we can't step on is his belly right here. Reason being, if I'm foolish and I step through there, he has a free esteem lock that he can start looking to set up. Uh, Ryan, let's have you sit on the floor, please. So I throw, I get my trailing, we hit yes, he frames here. When we frame, guys, uh, the way I like to describe it is it's like a 20, 30% karate chop. Yes, you want to be uh, connected with your partner. Now here he's going to lift his hips up and over, and he finds that connection with this outside leg is what he's looking for. This leg makes connection, his hips come up, and he gets his butt back into the But that is what we got to avoid. Because through to here, I can start to set this up, and this can become very dangerous, okay? So don't step here, but you can step on the leg. You can step on the shoulder, you can step on the head, you can step just about anywhere you want. You just can't put it on the belly, okay? You can even step on legs, wherever he wants to go. So let's do this one more time. I throw, trail leg is set. So he makes the connection, he lifts his butt up. Yeah, right there, and he's connected again, okay? So we're looking to do one where I don't get quite so far, so he palm props, and he spins and faces me. The second one, we'll grab him, get to, yes, he's got a frame. Make sure, yeah, woo, that looks great. Good job, Ryan. Okay, so a really simple drill to get us started. Uh, we're going to start working our uh, elbow escape after this. Well, actually, no, we'll do our bridging after this, and then we'll work on this again. This is just to get us some movement and get us warmed up. Any questions on it, guys? Okay, grab your partner. Remember, it's going to look like this. On two, guys. Ready? One, two. Good class. Well done. We're not slackers. Okay. You want to be like Ryan? Just a few minutes of this, guys. Guys, I'll let you know in 45 seconds of time. Yeah, I'll just be extra careful. This one is very, very good. You'll get the same effect here, but with the wrist. Yep. Nice. Good simple system. Lift your butt up. Find that connect. Yes! Very good. Great. Sorry. Good job. And time! Let's bring it in, everybody. <laughs> All right, so I like to warm up with that because uh, the truth is these solo drills are a little monotonous. But we've got some blood flowing right now and we can do a little bit of this uh, drilling work here. Uh, so what we want to be doing when we're doing a uh, solo bridge, there is a lot of information to it, but this is, in my opinion, the most important technique in jiu-jitsu. Uh, so it's worth studying all the different details to it. So what we essentially want to do when we're bridging somebody, uh, I'll ask you to come up with outside the pool in just a second. If I bridge straight up, I'm not really displacing my partner's center of mass. He moves up, and then he comes right back down. So the goal isn't to generate force up. Instead, we want to torque our body. We want to spin our body really fast, and that's going to displace the center of mass away from us. So if Ryan comes here and takes top position on me, and I just hit this big bridge up in the oh, uh, side components. And I just hit some big, massive bridge up. Oh, I didn't do anything. 
But when I bridge to the side asymmetrically, and my, el- my, my left thumb is connected to my body, and my left elbow goes away, watch what happens. He moves a dramatic distance. I've displaced his center of mass. And now from here, I basically have a spear with my right shoulder and left elbow. So now when Ryan drives back into me, I'm, I'm moving away, or I'm staying where I am, because I did a really good job of moving him away, and now I'm in a very mechanically strong position. Okay, thank you. So let's just keep in mind, this is not what we're looking to do. Instead, we're going to be doing an asymmetrical bridge. What that means is our legs aren't doing the same things. They do very different things as we bridge. Watch the regular bridge, they're doing the same thing, not our goal. Instead, we're going to set our legs asymmetrically, like this. So now I have one leg oriented, oriented at the floor and one leg oriented at the sky. My thumbs stay very tight to my body, my head should be on the floor. So once again, from here to here. And pay close attention to my right toes. See how they're gripping the floor? This is extremely important. Now from here, I'm going to bridge into this direction here. So my left foot generates a force up, my hips come up. Notice my right knee is into the mat here. I continue to bridge up, my elbow tucks underneath, my elbow comes away from me, I'm looking at the floor. Then from there I'll relax, reset, shift my feet. Same thing, elbow comes up, this one tucks in, and I'm thinking about my eyebrow and my knee and this foot right here. One last thing for us to consider, the further my feet are away from my hips, the less strength that I have. So I want my feet to be coming close to my body, asymmetrically positioned, these toes are very important here. And then from there, as I do extend into the bridge, my high elbow goes away from my body as far as it can, not my hand, but my elbow. And my inside elbow needs to tuck in underneath me. So look as I go into this side, my elbow doesn't stay placid, it tucks underneath. From here, what we can do now is we can start walking with our bridge. And then finally, hit a leg scissor. Come up to turtle. Okay. Uh, now, <clears throat> Where that technique's usually going to be seen, the leg scissors are pummel escape. We'll go over it at the very end here. But this is a really good one-two combo for us to be working into our arsenal. The elbow's in. Asymmetrical bridge. A little walk here. And notice my right elbow is basically a wheel here. And notice also I'm not crossing my feet. If I take my elbow away from the equation, there's way more friction here. I move much slower. So it's of the utmost importance when we're here. And this elbow tucks underneath. And move. Okay, the leg scissors is just kind of a cherry on top. I really want to heavily emphasize the bridge here. So I'm going to put about a minute and a half on the clock for us here. Uh, and then let's really emphasize this bridging mechanic. One more time for you. One, two. And notice how my whole body is twisted. It's a torque. Like that. Okay, guys? So let's give it a shot. Like I said, a minute, uh, minute and a half. On two, everybody. One, two. Keep those thumbs close to your chest. One goes away. Very nice. Think about those toes too, guys. Keep those toes on the floor. Nice, guys. Yeah, that's great. The only thing you want to add when you bridge over that direction is that left elbow goes away. Step over me. I'll put all your weight on my hip. Step up. Oh no, stand up, put a foot on my head, and stand, put all your weight on me. Yeah, okay, it's fine. Oh, yeah, very easy. Now if I take this knee up, do the same thing. I can't hold him up here. If this knee isn't touching the floor, my hips can't stay elevated. Do it again. But if my knee is on the floor, and I'm set here like this, he goes through it again, he can step right over me. It's very easy for me to maintain 100% of his weight because it's not muscle that's bearing that weight, it's the structure of my leg. Okay. So that's something that I really want to emphasize there when we're, when we're working these escapes. And it's going to be very important that we get to a, a strong bridge position. Okay. So uh, now what we'll cover is our elbow escape here. Okay. So we're just going to start off on bottom of side control and, uh, and we're going to have our, our frames established. So Ryan's going to be here in side control. What I want us to set up here are elbow frames. So that means these are our middle distance frames and these are what we're going to be looking to set here guys. So we always want to bend our hands right here like this. And we have good control of the bicep and the shoulder right here, okay? Now your partner, uh, let's have both knees on the floor, please. Uh, bring your knees up a little closer to my hips. Yeah, right there. Now, very important that my right elbow is on the inside and have these grips set here. So what we're gonna do right off the beginning is we're gonna do a little bridge away from our partner and then we're gonna bridge back into them. Now, our main goal when we bridge into our partner is to use that thumb tight and the elbow going away to move Ryan's head over my head. 
If his head fails to move over my head to here, he goes to push into me, he'll flatten. If I'm successful, I bridge him one way, I bridge him back the other, and I can bridge to here, he drives back into me, it's not going to work anymore. I've created effective separation. Once we get here, what our goal is next is to create space between this knee and my hip. So from here, I'll start to shrimp away, making that space, and I've got this chasm for my inside knee to start coming through. My leg will step on his hip. And now from here, we're going to uh, introduce a concept known as majority inside control. So right here, I have essentially two pieces on the inside. And then Ryan, with this arm right here, has two pieces on the inside. Okay, so we're basically 50-50. If I tried to attack here, it wouldn't necessarily net to my benefit. So what I want to do is bring my whole leg to the inside, bring my arms to the inside here and here. And now I've got majority inside control. I have more pieces on the inside than he does. And I have options that I can go for here. I could just simply take guard, or especially if Ryan's driving into me, coming tight in, I can start to look for attacks here. Okay? So we want to have this uh, idea set in our head that we uh, want to get as many pieces on the inside before starting our attack. So from the very beginning here, I have two pieces on the inside, but I don't have any connection with my hips. So I do a little bridge away with my right elbow coming away from my body. And then when I bridge back into him, my hips reset. I bridge, my thumb comes away, I move his head. Now from there, I need to move my hips away from this knee. Once I'm away, my right knee can come through. And also note that my right knee isn't going to go at his knee. It's not going to go at his ribs. I need to set the proper insertion point, which is my knee, right at his hip bone. It'll slide through. Then from there, you step on the hip, use your elbow to gain back this inside position. Easiest thing for you to do is come back into the guard. If you feel like being a bit more aggressive, thumb post, bring this guy through here, and start looking at your triangle. But uh, the main idea today is pin escape. Uh, we don't necessarily need to be uh, going right back to the attack, but that brings up the uh, idea of the satisfactory theory approach versus maximizing approach. As you get further into the sport, you should start to see every position you're in as an opportunity to attack. Even if somebody has your back, there's opportunities to attack out of that, rather than just seeing the sport as, I need to get out of the bad position into a neutral position and then attack. But today, we are going over just how to get you guys back to safety. In the long run, though, you should be looking to attack out of every position. Okay? So main thing I want to see us do here, the partner's going to take top. We have our elbow frames in. Notice my hands aren't that far away. My, my hands are coming in back towards my body. My hands bend, and my elbows are really what's creating uh, the space between us. A bridge towards his head with my right elbow, striking, create a little off balance, and then moving back with our left elbow, coming through to here. Final detail, move your knee, your hips away from this knee. This leg will slice through, and we're ready to get back to majority inside position. Right. Okay, guys, any questions on that one? Cool. I'll set a timer for about a minute, and uh, then I'll have you guys switch after that. Okay? Let's get it on. There we go. Now take your left foot, step on his hip. Now, if you want majority inside position, you use this elbow to lift his shoulder and bring your knee to the inside space. Now you have four pieces on the inside, he has none, so you're good to go. What's your name, by the way? John. Pleasure to meet you. Okay, good to meet you. Yes, sir. Oh, that's time, guys. Buying it with this idea of uh, our third of our three frames. So in jiu-jitsu, you have three different types of frames you can use. We've used two of them so far. Uh, one option, when Ryan was throwing my feet, uh, stand up, please. He was throwing my feet, and he was looking to get by me. I was able to make a connection here. That's a palm frame. It's our strongest and longest frame. Works great at long distance. Uh, but it is susceptible. If I'm not accurate with this and I miss, I didn't stop his motion, and you can keep coming down. This is a horrible situation right here. So it's a long, strong frame. Uh, the next frame is the elbow frame. That's if this foot comes into my hip. That's where I'm moving here. Also, if you were to come down to side control, these are the frames that we usually use in this situation. Our third frame are gonna be what we call backhand frames. These are frames of last resort. And essentially, these are the frames we're looking to set when we know we've lost in a situation. We know we're about to get up a guard pass. We want to defend it at that point. So if Ryan, once again, goes to throw my feet, and I see that he's starting to get by me, I'll come to these frames here and orient myself at him. Try to get some inside space. Try to get across this. Try to get under hook. It's really hard. Really hard to get any space on the inside here. And now what we're going to look to do from this situation is I need to upgrade my backhand frame to an elbow frame. That's going to be really hard to do here. So what we're going to need to do is start to shoulder walk, create distance, and then we can upgrade to this elbow frame. Once I have my elbow frame, I have two options. I can just punch this hand through for an underhook, 
or I could bring it up here for my second elbow grip. Okay? So the big concept I want you guys to work on here is as your partner stands up and he passes my guard, and I know I'm about to lose the situation, the inside hand goes on the ear, the outside hand comes to my hip, and play around with your partner here. The one mistake we could make here, guys, if you orient yourself like this, oh, easiest back take in the world, homie. He's about to lock up his seatbelt. You, you just did some damage to yourself. So these backhand frames are only gonna work if you orient your chest at your partner. Now try to get some inside space really hard to get anything to happen here. So what I want to do now, he just did it for me, was move my shoulders away from this knee. If he crushes me and brings everything in really tight, I can't really upgrade here. So I need to shoulder walk away so that I can upgrade my frame. And then from here, you have the option if you wanted to go pummel, it's right here, or you could bring it up right here. Okay, so once we have our frames, we're gonna be looking to use that elbow skate. Remember, don't just go right into the bridge against him. Bridge away to off balance, and then bridge over. Elbow skate. Leg comes through, push him apart, and your partner's gonna stand up and hit a pass. Now, uh, for our newer students, just hit this pass, okay? Don't feel bad about, uh, I mean, don't, not, not bad, but don't feel like you need to do this crazy pass I'm about to show, okay? So this is a no gi toriando. Now, the reality is, if I'm fighting somebody else that's super duper good, this is never gonna happen. They're never gonna let that happen. The, the feet are not gonna be able to move that far. Usually what people do in this situation, yeah, what I'll do here is uh, uh, take my hands and grab my knees, like this, and then, uh, actually, switch my body. Like this, and I try to throw my feet. Come on, come on. Yeah, this is a hot Mendez thing. Really hard to move my feet. So against an elite player, expecting to grab these feet and throw them, that's never gonna happen. Players are too strong. So instead of expecting to get a dramatic reaction, Instead, what we're going to work with in a realistic situation is just expecting to deviate these a little bit and get a little bit of action on the side. Here, that's all we're looking to do. That. So you see, it's a little Toriando move here, like I'm doing a bullfighter, and then two steps. Okay, we'll do the other step. There, okay? Very, very simple, small move. Once we get set here, our head and hands have goals. The hand on the outside, right here, the, yeah, the outside hand, is gonna be looking to get connection on his ribs, right here, and then the elbow sets uh, weight you know, on his thigh. Not grabbing at the hip, but right here on the ribs, with my elbow going in. So almost like this hand goes here, and the elbow crushes. The hand over here is gonna come to cover the knee, usually with our fingers down. The big detail that I've missed for a very long time is this head position right here. With my head set here, now Ryan tries to set his recovery leg on me. He's trying to set that foot up so that you're trying to set this foot to here to recover. With my head set here, go to set the recovery. He's just not gonna be able to point that leg at my hip. So what I'm gonna do here is start to walk his legs away and settle it on the pass. Now from here, Ryan's gonna go to his backhand frames, here and here. And as I try to come up and get inside position, just remember the one thing you don't wanna let your partner do is start to get here. So make sure you're pointing your, yeah, right here. This is going to be tough. I'm going to have to do a lot of work in order to get through these frames. And he's going to shoulder walk away from me. Yeah, and I can upgrade that frame. Boom. Now he said he can bridge away from me. Boom, I'm out of balance. He bridges into me. Yes, right through there. And he can start to remember. Let's, oh, yes, the inside knee every time. This top knee isn't going to put me back, isn't going to put Ryan back in guard. This bottom knee will. Okay, his bottom knee is set. I'm trying to move in and crush him. He steps on my hip, uses his elbow to get that knee inside. Back. And now he's got his guard. Okay, we do the pass one more time. Down, set, listen. One, two, one, two, three. Then from there, walking towards his hips, looking to get his knee across my body. Then from there, he orients himself here and here, pointing himself at me, moves his shoulders away from me. Yeah, that's gonna let him upgrade that inside hand to an elbow frame. And now from here, he can bridge away and bridge back in. Okay, guys? So, remember your backhand frames here. You can't look away from them though. You gotta look right at them with them. Shoulder walk away and upgrade your frames. Okay, guys? Yes. Just like that. One, two, ready, one, two. Right here, uh, the last thing we'll cover. Uh, so I get you on bottom of side control, Ryan. So, uh, our pit escape system, we kind of danced around it without actually talking about it today. So let's explicitly state what our five steps are for our pit escape system. The first step is always going to be relax and breathe. He's isolated your torso and he's putting pressure on you. It's hard to breathe, that sucks. He doesn't have any limbs isolated, so you're not really in that critical of danger. First step is relax and breathe. Bring your elbows as 
close back into your body as you can. So if uh, Ryan, say, had top side control on me, and he had everything he's looking for here and here, okay, bringing our elbows in as tight as we can. Okay, switch top. The next step, uh, uh, the second and third kind of intersect a bit. Uh, if I have not done a good job with my pin, and Ryan has an easy first frame available, first piece on the inside, he should just set. More often than not against a skilled partner like myself, I'm not going to leave that opening for you. So your second step would be using Kazushi or off balancing to get somebody uh, to open up for that frame. Now, it's a difficult question. Does anybody know the de textbook definition of when you force somebody to, when you put somebody out of balance? Four things can happen when you put somebody out of balance. Does anybody have a guess on that? So if you make somebody take a step, if you make somebody put a hand on the floor, if somebody's head hits the floor, or their butt hits the floor, that's how you know you've put somebody out of balance, okay? So what that's gonna entail here with Ryan, when I'm trying to out, uh, off balance him, when he has the, uh, when, he, when I don't have my inside frame, I need him to put a hand on the floor. That's how I know I've had a successful attack on his balance, okay? Uh, the easiest way to show that is if uh, Ryan stands up real quick, and I get both my feet set here, and I give him a little push, his butt hit the floor, so he's out of balance, okay? That's just a really easy way of demonstrating it. So first off, Ryan, bottom of side control so I can show you where I'd like you to put me. So this frame is everything. Inside control, this is everything right here. If you can get inside this frame from side control, so many beautiful things open up and vice versa. If he doesn't have this frame, he's got one mission, okay? So what I'd like to see us do here, uh, it doesn't have to be the textbook perfect way like I'm doing here, but I want to point his knees away from me, lift this guy up, bring myself in here, and then here. So see, I have 100% of the inside space around his head and shoulders. This is where I'd like for us to start here in this situation. Okay, can you do that to me, please? Yeah, okay, so here, he controls all of the inside space around me. This is as bad as it gets. So, first step, just chill, chill as best you can, okay? The next step is gonna be the relationship between his knee and my head. If his knee is touching my head, and this knee and my head, then he's maximally wedged my inside frame into position. So I have a bolt. I gotta move my head away from his knee. If I can just use my feet and drive my head away, my frame will slide right into here. And this is my first piece on the inside. I can start using this to escape. If I'm not having luck moving away from him, say he's a really big, strong guy and he's squeezing me really hard, what we'll do here is hit a bridge away from him in that direction. So I'll set my feet up, I'll bridge, my elbow is gonna strike him. So my hand stays tight, my elbow strikes. Ah, you see that hand? That shows he was out of balance there, okay? So because his hand moved and went to the floor, that was a successful attack on his balance. Now I'm gonna rotate back the other direction, putting my right shoulder on the floor. And now my frame is set here, okay? So once we have this frame set, what I want the partner on top to do is squeeze me. Set that straight, yes, exactly. And what we're gonna practice here is a little bit of Kazushi back and forth. So I'm gonna bridge one way with my elbow coming away, and I'm gonna bridge back the other way. Now from here, he's out of position, his head's out of the way. Make him scoop in, hit that guy, okay? So Ryan, without, without you here, real quick, just, so watch what I was doing there. So I was in here, he maximally trapped this arm. I tried to move my head away, so that I could slice that frame back in. But in the second situation, I'm trying to move my head away, it's not working. So I need to use a bridge away, and then a bridge towards. Bridge away, and a bridge towards. Every time my, my hip rises, my elbow should rise with it. Here and here. And I'm sure some of you saw, I did use a biceps cross face there, so when Ryan was set through here, now it's through here. This is, there's nothing wrong with this bridge here. As long as that elbow goes away, your hand turns down, this is a fine attack. And this one over through to here, that same thing, as long as my elbow comes away and into him, I'm creating a lot of off balance in effect with very little cost to my own cardio because I'm using my glutes on every one of these attacks on his balance. Okay, so the main thing I want us to focus on here, your partner's gonna have the inside frame trapped. First step, relax and breathe. Get your partner out of balance. Now from there, look how my shoulder came up. Now I'm gonna put it back on the mat and that created some space for my first frame on the inside. Then from there, use your frames off balance your partner until you can move their head away from you. Now here it's that same thing here as it would be if it was here, both of these. He tries to push into me, it's not gonna have effect. So my hips can move away, leg comes in. Go back to my guard. Okay guys? 
So main goal here is you don't have your inside frame, and you gotta get it back, okay? Then the, the whole complete system I did there without saying that, once we have our first piece on the inside, we wanna get majority inside position, and then from there it's either back to our guard or re-attack, okay? So you start off with nothing, relax and breathe, off balance your partner, first piece on the inside, then majority inside position, and then it's either attack or submission. Okay, guys? So, with our partner, let's give this a shot. On two, ready, one, two. Thank you, Ryan. Make sure your knee is touching their head. Completely get inside that break. Bridge back into him and then here, this situation with my shoulder, my hands close, my shoulder, uh, I'm sorry, my elbows away from me. This shoulder's playing on the floor, I got a spear into him, he pushes back into me, it's not gonna work. Remember, this only works if his head is past my head. If I allow Ryan's head to come to here, now he pushes into me, he'll flatten me out extremely easily. Okay? So keep that in mind on your elbow escape, you must move their head over your head to have a successful attempt to regard. Okay? So let's take a look, uh, Ryan, bottom of the side control. So now here, uh, anybody know Nicky Rod? Yeah, I trained that guy a lot. Uh, one of his favorite things to do to people um, is he'll have his cross face set, and then he'll either pick up the hips, place his hand here, and squeeze you on this side, or he'll lift up the hips, and he'll squeeze you here, here, and usually this hand will come over through to here. So on either one of these situations, what your partner is essentially doing is they're denying you the ability to move your hips away from the inside knee. So even if you were to get my head over the other side of my body, squeeze my head over to here, he tries to move his hips away to re-guard, it's not happening. Because right now, with the way my hands are set, I've stopped his hips from moving away from my inside knee, so I can hold him here indefinitely. It's, uh, it's horrible training with that guy, uh, horrible. Uh, and he would hold you there for just minutes at a time, but I realized well, if he's denying the elbow escape, he's leaving a just gigantic opening for your uh, pummel escape, okay? So let's have you come up strap your right. I'm set here, I got my frames, he takes his right hand and he's either gonna cover the middle of my back just like this, or he'll take the hand on the other side of my body and he'll cover right into there, like that. On either one of these, we have our, our, our frame here on our partner's head, the hand comes inside to here. We use a big bridge right on the floor. I want my left elbow to come up and away from me through to here and hit my uh, initial elbow. Let's reset, so he takes his hand, not on that side, but through to here he controls the hip, okay? So when we're set here, what we're gonna do is we take our left hand, we point our fingers down our body, and we use a punch to bring our left elbow inside of the shoulder, right through here. As long as he doesn't have any bit of his shoulder under my chin, I'm good to go here. If he has even the slightest bit of his shoulder under my chin, when I go to bridge, the force of my bridge will go through his body and into my face. Ow, not feel good. So we wanna make sure that we have this for, uh, his wedge not set on our chin. Now, so from here, my hand punches, I go through here. He takes his right hand, he entangles my leg. Exactly, right there. Now, that, he stopped my ability to turn towards him, but I still have the ability to turn away from him. My inside hand is gonna find my space here. I turn my body, my right foot is gonna bridge when my right elbow comes up and away, and I come out the back door. So he shut down my pummel there, but he left himself extremely vulnerable to the back door scene. And that's our one-two combo. Let's show the back door just by itself. So we set here up top. All we need here is a thumb post with our outside hand. Our inside hand pummels through to here. I turn away, and then my right foot bridges, and I bring them away. A couple cool things we can hit here. A dart choke is available, but more often than not, it's just pushing them away and getting our guard back. Okay, let's take a look at that one-two again. And through to here, I go for my pummel, he blocks it. Now, the uh, third and final one this is from the mount. Takes top mount position. Now, um, actually, make it on top of the so I can talk about it. Now, obviously, if we're in a self defense situation, having somebody postured up over us is a big deal because of the, the stripes and everything. But jujitsu wise, this is no good. Because if I set my double cross here, now, now try to single leg bridge, get me to the floor, and much of anything is horror. This is really a dangerous, this is a dangerous gripping sequence. Eventually. So you can't let somebody chill here. If somebody grabs these on you, this is really bad news. 
my whole weight of my body is connected here. He's not going to be able to bridge me to the floor. We can't let somebody set here. So if that, somebody's ever bridging up on you here, I'm sorry, postured up on you, what we want to do here is one knee comes up and a single leg bridge. Top him out. If he goes for that double cross, oh, so your hands will be up like you're doing a cross choke. Yeah, really bad news. Now I try a single leg bridge. Oh, well, well, Kazushi, you got him off eventually. But we don't want to let somebody set these grips. So you posture up without the grips. Same leg bridge, trap an arm. The traditional escape is always showed to block the foot, and then we bridge. We're not going to block the foot. We're going to leave the foot open. I'm going to strike him with my right elbow and bridge him over that way. And my hope is that he steps this leg up. There we go. Now from there, I have my frame set. Legs come through, and I have a really easy access on the uh, escape from there. Okay? So those are just uh, three little one-two combos that I've uh, been thinking about a bit in terms of the escape. Because remember, it's not enough to just have a technique that hits on, that works on somebody. You want to do things that elicit a reaction, and then you take advantage of that reaction. So the elbow escape is when they block it with that arm. Gives us the pummel. If we go on the pummel, they block the leg, we have the back door. And then under uh, buck and roll, is what I call that, or a bridging escape from mount. If we hit that, it opens up our elbow escape back door. So we're just trying to link our techniques together. Okay, guys? Cool. Um, if you guys, I'll give you a few minutes if you wanted to practice any of those techniques. And then I'm sure you get to train or go. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Let's do it. Guys, thank you very much. Appreciate yeah. it.